دوباره بسات طرب شد مهیا The point I want to mention is this, brothers and sisters. Imam al-Zaman, meeting him is a privilege. It's an honor, without a doubt. But perhaps we're better off connecting with him. Whether we get to see him or not is something that's up to him. He will get to decide who eventually has the privilege of setting their eyes on the beautiful, luminous face of God's representative on earth. That's entirely up to him. And he himself says, if you want that kind of access, ولو أن أشياعنا وفقهم الله لطاعته. He says these in a letter addressed to Shaykh al-Mufid. What's the difference between me and Shaykh al-Mufid, brothers and sisters? It's obvious. Why is it that when Imam al-Zaman speaks to Shaykh al-Mufid, this is how he speaks to him? He says to him, إلى الأخ الرشيد والشيخ المفيد. Imam al-Zaman addresses Shaykh al-Mufid as my dear brother. How is it that Shaykh al-Mufid has that kind of relationship with Imam al-Zaman? And I am as far away from the teachings and ideals of the Imam as, I, as anyone could be. The answer is, is simple. It's not rocket science. The Imam himself says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَشْيَاعَنَا وَفَقَهُمُ اللَّهُ لِطَاعَتِهِ If only our followers, the people who claim to be our partisans, if they upheld the covenant that they have with us, the promise that they've made to us, when you called yourself a Shia, you're making an implicit promise that I will follow your teachings, I will follow your lead, I will walk in your footsteps. You make this promise to Rasulullah, you make this promise to Amir al-Mu'mineen, you make this promise to Fatima al-Zahra, you make this promise to Imam al-Zaman. If you, if you only upheld this, and it's not hard, brothers and sisters, it's not. Wallahi, as one of my teachers used to say, Rahmatullah ala Ayatullah, Shaykh Baqir Alam al-Huda, he used to say that if, if you think about it, the first step in the path to righteousness is the hardest step. The first one is the hardest. You know those times when, for example, a sister who doesn't wear hijab, when she decides to actually put on the hijab and, he, and she tells her family that I want to put on the hijab, that is by far the most difficult step. After that, it gets easier and easier and easier because you get divine support. The first time you say, I want to go to hajj, I want to go to ziyara, I want to get married, I want to do the right thing. The first step is always the hardest. After that, God steps in. Ala qadr takunu min Allah al God's backing and support of a believer is in proportion to the intention that they have, the willpower that they have. You make a solid intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come through to you. He'll support you, he'll back you. Subhanallah, this verse is incredible in Surah Al Talaq. Allah says, if you show piety, God will provide for you. He will find a way out for you. And he will provide for you from sources you didn't expect. Suddenly it works out. Suddenly it happens. It's like when you say, I want to go to Ziyarah, but you don't have money, you don't have a passport, you don't have connections, you don't have anyone going with you. Suddenly things fall into place. Suddenly things happen without you even anticipating it. Subhanallah. My point is this, brothers and sisters. Imam al-Zaman wants one thing from you and I. And that is to follow in his footsteps. To ensure that we don't add to his misery just think about this, Imam al-Zaman's entire legacy and history is one of death and carnage. Every single one of his ancestors was hunted down and murdered. From Rasulullah all the way to his father, Imam al-Hasan al-Askari. When he thinks of his parents and ancestors, all he sees is death, all he sees is assassinations, all he sees is betrayals, and above all is the greatest tragedy of all, and that is of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. I will remember you, O oh my grandfather, every morning and every night. And I will cry for you until my tears dry up and I start to shed flesh, fresh blood of, out of my eyes. This is what he sees when he looks at his past and his history. And then he looks at the present day. He looks at this world today. And he sees his followers, he sees his children, he sees these people that proclaim his loyalty and his fellowship being subjected to suffering and dying and whatnot. All this suffering all this pain, all this misery, let's make sure you and I don't add to it with our sins. That's all, that's all God wants from us vis-a-vis -vis Imam al-Zaman. Let's not add to the pain of having to look at my report card every Tuesday night and every Thursday night and seeing sin after sin after sin after transgression. Insha'Allah. <laughs> فدای سجایای زهرایتون 